for all this I considered in my heart even to declare all this that the righteous and the wise and their works are in the hand of God. No man knoweth either love or hatred by all that is before him. All things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked, to the good and to the clean and to the unclean, to him that sacrificeth and to him that sacrificeth not. As is the good, so is the sinner. And he that sweareth, as he that feareth an oath. This is an evil among all things that are done under the sun, that there is one event unto all. Yes, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil, and madness is in their heart while they live. And after that they go to the dead. For to him that is joined to all the living there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we pray tonight, Lord, if there's any in the hearing of this message tonight, that they would, uh, it would uh, stir their hearts to be joined to the living, Father, by trusting in your precious Son, Jesus Christ. Uh, Lord, we know that you're the only way, the way, the truth, and the life, Lord. And we pray that uh, hearts would be touched and folks would uh, reason in their hearts this thing about eternal life. And come to Christ, Lord, while there is time to come to Christ. Help me, Lord, to hold me up by the power of your might. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, the singing tonight. And Lord, thank you for each one who has come out, Lord, and bless them. Hold me up by the power of your might to do the preaching. Let it be from thy heart and what is on thy mind. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Solomon here at the end of Ecclesiastes, he concluded by saying that we're all a mess and there's only two options. Just two options, folks. You don't have door number one, door number two, and door number three. At the end of your life, it's either heaven or it's hell. It's either your sin debt has been paid because you've trusted in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ to pay your sin debt or you have to pay for that yourself. And... You'd think that is a compelling argument for someone to reach out by faith and trust Christ. He didn't make it difficult. He said, whosoever will, let him come. And he that heareth, you know, whosoever, that's you, me, that's anybody and everybody. So, one, you either go to the dead or number two, you're joined to the living. Solomon said the heart of the sons of men is full of evil and madness is in their heart while they live. And after that, they go to the dead. And you get up in my age, you see those years pass by. It seems like very quickly something that happened in my life 10 years ago. Seems like it was but a few months. Just the time pass, passes by. And all of a sudden, you're, you're uh, toward the end of your life. And you say, well, what what am I trusting in to get me to heaven? Well, I made that decision as a boy, and I never faltered on that knowledge that I was going to heaven. Now, I don't mean, don't mean that I lived right all my life. But I know that by the, the faithfulness of Jesus Christ and what he did for me and my putting my faith and trust in that, in his sacrifice, that I've got a heavenly home. Jesus said, I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. <clears throat> well, the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. Now, when the children of Israel sin, uh, sin Moses said this in Exodus 32, 32. He said, yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, Moses is entreating the Lord for Israel. Uh, yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book, which thou hast written. Moses said, if you're not going to save my people, I'd rather you just blot, blot me out of the book you had written. Have written then in verse 33, it's the Lord said unto Moses, and the Lord said unto Moses, whosoever have sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. 
that's pretty interesting. You know what Stro teaches on that. Stro teaches that uh, uh, when you reach that age of accountability, the first sin you sin, your name's blotted out of that book of the living. And there's, there's uh, several books. Jeremiah does a, a thing on the books, several different books, book of remembrance. Uh, uh, your tears are written down in, in God's book. I'm not going to go into all that. But in uh, Psalms 139.15, The writer said, my substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Then Psalms 139, 16, it says, thine eyes shall see my substance, yet being unperfect and in thy book, all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned when as yet there was none of them. My, my, my. Before that baby is even fashioned in the womb. Its members are written. God's got their members written down. You know, you'd think a lot more people would have, would have got, got onto this thing when they figured, discovered DNA. God had already talked about that substance. So apparently when life was formed in you, you were written down in God's book of the living. Not quite sure how all that goes. But the moment you're sinned, your, your name was blotted out. The Lord told Nicodemus, you've got to be born again. You've got to be born again. When you're born again, your name's written down in that Lamb's book of life. Does that make sense? The Bible says in Ephesians 2, 1, that you are dead. The moment you sin, you are dead in trespass and sin. So in order to be Rejoined, renewed in the image of God, that familiar, family relationship renewed with God, you have to be born again. It was, and that, that church is a mystery. Called it a mystery. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Nicodemus didn't get it. Said, Can a man, uh, how can a man be born a second and uh, put in his mother's womb and born a second time? He didn't get it. The Lord said, Marvel not that I said to you, you must be born again. So, now, everyone in this building falls into one of these two groups. You are either dead and trespass and sin, or you've been born again. And I've had people tell me, I had a girl tell me one time in college, said, oh, I'm a Christian, but I'm not one of those born again types. And I said, well, the, it's the Lord that said that. You must be born again. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Duh. If you're not one of the born-again types, then you're not his type at all. You're either dead and trespassing in sins, or you've been born again. You're either lost or you're saved, condemned or justified. 1 Corinthians 15, 22, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. All right, here in our text in Ecclesiastes 9, it says, A heart of the sons of men... Is full of evil and madness is in their heart while they live. And after that, they go to the dead. For to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. So that verse says there's hope. If you decide to be joined to the living and there's only one way to do that and that's by trusting Jesus Christ be born again Christ is called a quickening spirit that will make you alive your spirit alive again and you're joined to the living because you were dead the moment you sinned according to Deuteronomy your name was blotted out of that book and, and you're born with that sinful nature it says, because of Adam. It says, as in Adam all die, and Christ shall all be made alive. The Bible says, the wages of sin is death. So the moment I sinned, my name blotted out of the book of the living, and there was a penalty that I owed for my sin. And that penalty, that penalty was death. There's a penalty, a holy God requires a penalty... For someone's sin. And then I remember reading Revelation 20.14. And the Bible says in Revelation 20.14. 
death isn't the end of it. It says death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. Mm -mm -mm. Didn't want any part of that action. I didn't want to be part of that plan. I mean, I'm smart enough to see that I was a rascal, a sinner, and I needed a savior. And then when I saw the result of my sin outside of Jesus Christ, I, boy, it didn't take me long to come to the Lord as a boy and say, Lord, I know I'm a mess. You know, and I know you're the Savior, and I know my only way to heaven is through you. So I'm going to trust you. The mm -mm. Bible said that death and hell were cast into the lake of, of fire. Man, uh, that scared me. I think that's a healthy thing to be afraid of, having to pay for your sins. It sure scared me. If you're here tonight and you're not saved, you ought to be scared too. If God's word is true, and, and it is, one fellow uh, went through this book and, and could prove that this, this Bible is the truth uh, mathematically. He took all those, was it Hegel's Law, probability, like uh, he'd take, uh, for instance, Christ was born in Bethlehem, and there's like 26 provinces in, in uh, Judea, and it's like a 1 in 26 probability that he was born there. And every prophecy, there's like 40-something uh, different prophecies by 40-something different prophets over 500 years, and everything specifically came to pass right on the money. The odds of that happening are like one to the tenth power with 30 zeros behind it. Not that many atoms in, in the universe. Yes, this is the word of God. And it says you need to be joined to the living because you're dead and trespass in sin until you do. It, it's really not that difficult. Paul said, I fear lest any corrupt you from the simplicity that is in Christ. Job said this, he asked this question, Job 25, 4, how then can a man be justified with God or how can he be clean that is born of woman? Job was, had some good questions. Well, there's just one way. Jesus said, I am the way. He didn't say I am a way. He didn't say, I'm one of the ways. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Solomon said in our text, to him that is joined to the living, there is hope. The Bible says, a righteous hath hope in his death. My hope is built on nothing less, the song says, than Jesus' blood and righteousness. That's what I'm trusting in. The Lord's blood and his righteousness, not my own righteousness. I, I couldn't make it to Lawrenceburg on my own righteousness. Solomon said, to him that is joined to the living, there is hope. Hey, the moment that I trusted Jesus Christ, the Bible says that I was joined to him. In fact, it says that I became bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. What's that about? I don't really get it, but I'm good with it because the Bible said so. The body of Christ. I was joined to a living Savior. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives. That's why. He is an eternal living sacrifice. He ever liveth, the Bible says, to make intercession for the saints. He's seated at the right hand of the Father making intercession for every born-again, blood-bought child of God tonight. The wages of sin that I owed was death. The penalty was death for my sin. And Jesus Christ decided 
to pay that debt, my debt, in my place. Do you get it? He became my substitute. He said, I'm going to take your sins, I'm going to pay for them, so that you can be reconciled unto God the Father. Because without it, there's no other sacrifice acceptable. Not am I just going to pardon your sin. I'm going to pay for your sin. And he did that on Calvary's cross. When he hung on the cross, he, com- he, he co- committed his spirit to God the Father, his soul Went down to the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. His spirit to God and his body went to the tomb of Joseph of Arithmia. Did I pronounce that right? I always get that name wrong. So when he hung on the cross, he looked up and said to his heavenly father, It is finished. Bible says in Isaiah 53 and the, God will look down and he'll see the travail of his soul his only son there shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied it is finished I'm satisfied the only thing that satisfies that debt is the precious blood of Jesus Christ The wages of sin is death, but the gift, that same verse says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I don't think anyone has ever given me a gift that I had to earn. If I had to earn it, I would never consider it a gift. If I had earned something, that's wages. But if somebody just through love says, here, I'm going to give this to you. That's what salvation is. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. Nothing you can do to earn it, to get it. To satisfy that debt with with God the Father. Only Jesus Christ could do that. The gift of God. It is the gift of God, the Bible says. Not of works. Lest any man should boast. If you could earn your way to heaven, you could brag about it. Well, I've been good. I've belonged to this and that organization. I've done all these wonderful uh, works. Man, I've helped uh, all kinds of folks out. Without Jesus Christ, you're in a heap of trouble, son. You're in big trouble without Jesus Christ. Hebrews 2, 9. But we see Jesus made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, watch it now, should taste death for every man. Mm -mm -mm. 1 Corinthians 15, 45, And so it is written, The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Then it says that that last Adam was the Lord from heaven. He was a quickening spirit. He makes alive again because he is the life. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. Romans 8, 11, But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit capital S, that dwelleth in you. I don't have to go to the dead. I am joined to the living. The moment that I trusted Jesus Christ. Now this body that I occupy, as Peter referred to, is this my tabernacle. It'll go to the grave. It's corruptible, but this corruptible will put on incorruption because my soul and spirit go directly to be with God and when the Lord comes back, I get a new body. 
I don't have to go to the dead. I'm joined to the living. For we, that verse I quoted was Ephesians 5.30. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. The, Lord, the devil couldn't kill the Lord. He can't kill me. Because I'm joined to the living. I don't have to pay for my sins. You know why? Because they've already been paid for. Jesus Christ paid for them and I accepted his payment and my place. And you can't convict a man twice of the same offense. That's double jeopardy. 1 Peter 3.18 For Christ also has once suffered for sins the just for the unjust that he might bring us to God being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Hey, you remember the part we, we, we said of, uh, where Moses with the Lord said, the soul that sinneth to him would I blot out of the book of the living. And, and the moment you trusted Jesus Christ, you're joined to the living, and guess what? Your name is written down in that Lamb's book of life. Now that church was foreordained by God before the foundation of the world. But the members came about in time. The whosoever wills. He gave you a choice. You can either receive him or you reject him. Dealer's choice. The moment you trusted Jesus Christ, joined to the living, your name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, man, it, it gets wild. Uh, the Lord told the disciples over in Luke, Luke uh, 10, verse 20, he said, but rather rejoice. Why? Because your names are written in heaven. That's some, something he told the disciples to rejoice about it. How often do you just, just kind of give up all those stresses and craziness and worries that are going through your head and say, I'm just going to rejoice because I know my name is written down in heaven. That'll set you free if you'll let it. Revelation 13, 8, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. The Antichrist shows up. Here's a good one. Esther 8.8. 8. Write ye also for the Jews as it liketh you in the king's name. And seal it with the king's ring. For the writing which is written in the king's name and sealed with the king's ring. Watch it. May no man reverse. Mm -mm -mm. That ought to set you free. Romans 8, 37, Nay, and all these things were more than conquerors through him that loved us. Are you joined to the living? Do you rejoice because you are, because your name's written down in heaven? Know you're saved. Know that we are those who are kept by the power of God unto salvation. Paul said, I know in whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. That's a, that's a wonderful thing. Are you persuaded? Do you know in whom you have believed? Are you persuaded that he is able to keep you? I am. The moment I got saved, this sinful body of flesh was identified with a crucified Christ, nailed to the cross with him. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Mm -mm -mm. That's a wonderful thought. That old flesh is reckoned dead, and I'm joined to the living in Christ. 
David said in Psalms 143, verse 11, Quicken me, O Lord, for thy name's sake. For thy righteousness' sake, bring my soul out of trouble. I prayed with a fellow back one of the uh, one of the schoolrooms there the other night. A rough old boy. He prayed and asked Jesus to save him. And I said, why don't you ask that in Jesus' name? That's one you're calling on. For his name's sake. That's why you hear preachers say, and for his name's sake. Because God loved his son. He's got a covenant with his son. The Lord says, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. I did that, and he did that. And now I'm passed from death unto life. Sometimes I, I think we, I've heard that some missionaries are guilty of this. They'll go to a third world country where people are just living nothing but a life of struggle and craziness. And they don't quite understand that just when you get saved, that don't mean all of a sudden everything's going to be wonderful. It just means that at one day it will be wonderful. If not in this life, then a wonderful life to come. I've seen folks struggle with alcohol and drugs and just as saved as you or I am and never can quite get the victory over it. Are they saved? Sure they are. Paul said, we are those that have no confidence, believe it was Paul, have no confidence in the flesh. Flesh is a, is a bear. Let him that thinks he stand take heed lest he fall. Let me move on. I'm about done here. John uh, 5, 24. <coughs> I use this verse in weddings. For Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath, that's present tense, hath everlasting life. How long is that? He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Solomon said in our text here in verse 3, Yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil and madness is in their heart while they live, and after that they go to the dead. For to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. Where do you, are you joined to Christ? It's just a, a prayer away. A prayer from a repentant heart. God won't refuse you. Why would he? 1 John 5, 11, And this is the record that God hath given to, unto us eternal life. And this life is in his son. You may belong to a different denomination. It's not in your... This life isn't in your denomination. It is in his son. He that hath the son hath life. And he that hath not the son of God hath not life. How do we escape? By trusting Jesus Christ. Psalms 119, 154. Plead my cause and deliver me. Quicken me according to thy word. Romans 8, 11, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your more. Here we go again. Quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Where do you stand with this? Choice is yours. You can, you can uh, die like all living flesh dies, or you can be joined to the living by Trusting Jesus Christ. And that soul and spirit will never see death. 
you become part of that spiritual body of Christ. You become bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. I don't understand all that. But that, that spiritual body of Christ is manifested by a local church. Literal, physical, visible local church like we are here. Are you joined to the living? If you're not, why not? Why don't, why don't you just trust him the best way you know how? Say, Lord, I know I'm a mess. I know, Lord, I've screwed up everything in my life, Lord, but I'm going to trust you. The best way I know how, I'm going to come to you and ask, Lord, that you'd be merciful to me, a sinner. You think he'll refuse you if, they, if you're sincere on that request? Why would he? Why would he refuse you after what he did on the cross? I'm done. Piano player comes, song leader. And the spirit and the bride say, come. And he that heareth say, come. And whosoever will, let him come. It'd be a good night to just come to Christ. You don't know what the night is going to bring, let alone what tomorrow might bring. Why don't you trust him? His burden is easy. His yoke is easy. His burden is light, the Bible says. If you're here tonight and you're unsaved and not saved, why don't you make that decision from the heart tonight? Ask Jesus Christ to have mercy on you. Won't you do that? The altar is open tonight. Maybe there's a burden on your heart you need to bring to God as we sing. All right. 308. 308.